Hi people, um, I don't like this, I don't like this one little bit, no. um, a lot of people will be, will be offended by this, uh, that's not the intention, the intention is to uh, inform people, okay, and uh, What you're about to see and what you're about to hear are, are two very immature adults attempting to, dis to discuss maturity as they seek to legitimise paedophilia. Listen to what they have to say. Would you not think that most adults would feel that a developed consideration for children would uh, involve leaving children alone sexually to find their own way for themselves with their own peer groups and not with adults? Yes, I would be all in favour for um, of uh, children finding their own way sexually, but I think also that adults have a part to play because children are one part of the whole society. It isn't, it isn't a, a, the society where we um, separate children from adults. What do you feel? I feel that uh, PI is not a procurement agency for children, never has been and never will be. Our political objectives um, include developing a society where children uh, are given a much higher status than today, where they are recognised as individuals in their own right, and this includes recognising their right to certain sexual freedoms, whilst protecting them from the kind of criminal assaults which took place in Brighton. But surely it's a question of recognising children's maturity, and how can you have an equal relationship, which is what I take a mature sexual relationship to be, between an adult and a child who is not mature, in body, in mind, or personal awareness. It has to be unequal. I, I don't accept that uh, this concept of maturity at all. Um, uh, adults, for instance, that aren't necessarily mature. It's a long process. Right, I take it granted that no adult is probably ever mature, but nevertheless, my state of maturity, or your state of maturity, is clearly different from that of a child of 12. How can there be an equal relationship which allows them sex, which is usually a shocking experience for everybody at some time or another? How can you allow an equal relationship between two people so unequally positioned at the starting off? I don't, accept, that, I don't accept that sex is a, is a spontaneously shocking experience. But I'm saying, at some stage or other, there is an element of shocking sex. Not if children are properly educated about sex, and it's uh, an obligation on society to see that children are given a far more comprehensive sexual education from a far earlier age. But in that case, they find it out, they discover this, with people of their own age and in, and in their own time. And it is the question of inequality which I come back to, which I think you have an answer. Indeed, by, by your lights, the, the, rela the relationship is unequal in the same, in the same way that a teacher-child relationship is unequal, in the same way that a parent-child relationship is unequal. The teacher is not like, exploiting the child sex. And nor is a pedophile. Pedophiles do not exploit children. Child pedophiles are using the child's, the child's sexuality. No, pedophiles do not use a child's sexuality. Pedophiles develop a mutual sexuality with the child. It's an entirely reciprocal relationship. But you can't say that because of this business of immaturity and the inequality of the relationship. Yes, but the definition of maturity is yours. We don't share it. Well, what is your definition of maturity in this context? Now, how can a child of 12 make a mature judgment about something like sex for the first time, which it has not the first idea about, and cannot possibly weigh the consequences of it? You're imputing to a sexual relationship heavy judgmental issues. Which no, I'm not. I'm talking about physical and psychical response. Yes. 
a physical a child is able to recognize a, a pleasurable experience he is able to recognize um, a, a pleasing emotional experience um, he is able to express consent and to, to recognize that this is something he wishes to continue uh, and a responsible um, caring pedophile um, it always refers to the uh, wishes of the child Right, there you have it. What do you make of it? And do they really believe what they're saying? Or is it just contrived arguments, false, false logic to justify their behaviour? <laughs> but then again, you know they say they must have more sex education at an earlier age. And bear in mind that uh, clip was from quite a few years ago. More sex education at an earlier age. We're getting this. Children as young as five. Been taught about masturbation for God's sake. You know, <clears throat> don't need to be taught about it. Many times, right? <laughs> hey, yeah. boys and girls, you, know, you do it quite naturally, you know. Explore your own bodies, it happens, you know. I don't need to be taught about it. And when you add to that, he said, uh, one of the guys said, uh, paedophiles do not exploit children. They don't use a child's sexuality. Don't use a, ch use a child's sexuality. Paedophiles develop mutual sexuality with a child develop a mutual sexuality with a child along with sex education at an early age that sounds like grooming to me there's no other word for it I don't know what to say um, there's many other people who have a deeper insight to these things than I have Look up Bill Maloney of Pine, Pine Mash Films. There's a link to him on my website. Um, you have social services. Here in Kent, where I live, um, the County Council has been awarded many thousands of pounds because they reached, quote, adoption targets. Well, if you have a Kent County Council who's responsible their social services department if they are being awarded thousands of pounds for reaching adoption targets then where is the social services where's the any incentive to um, give families counseling perhaps parental guidance help and advice. There's no incentive to do that. Not when you're getting paid thousands of pounds to reach adoption targets. And while Kent is in one of the top three, I think it is, when I looked, I don't have the figures to hand, but the last time I looked, I think they were at least in the top three. Maybe the top, let's say the top four would be generous. There's many, many other councils are uh, doing the same. And of course prior to adoption, many are in foster homes, many are in care homes. So much abuse is carried out in care homes. We know this it is a matter of fact. Again, thousands of children go missing every year. Not runaways who turn up later, missing children who, oh, there you are, I wonder where you've been all this time, but missing, gone, never ever seen again. Again, I will quote Bill Maloney on this. 
today's victims are tomorrow's witnesses. Look at the witnesses that are coming out now. They're disbelieved. The evidence isn't accepted. During the Labour government, Jack Straw ruled, made it a law. It's not a law, it's just a bit of petty legislation. Only this isn't quite so petty. And he said, children in care may not complain about any abuse while they are in care. Not allowed. Once they leave care, i.e. when they're 18, then they can complain about it. By which time they're told, ah, oh, it's, it's history, it's too old, can't look at it now. Or else they're just, oh, we don't believe you, you're making it up. It might be a bit different if they could make a complaint while they were still in care. No, not allowed to. All the reports in the papers recently, the sun, the mail, whatever, they're only scratching the surface. They're telling us what the alternative media have known for a long, long time. And they bring it out as if it's something new, as if they've done some bloody research and they've done jack shit. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry for swearing, but this makes me so angry. It makes me feel angry. And when I feel angry about these things, it's difficult not to be angry. But I always say, don't allow others to dictate how you feel. But it's horrendous. Where's the mention of, you know, they're throwing a few second-rate actors to the wolves. Yeah, a few singers and so on. Um, what about members of parliament? Okay. What about children abused on Ted Heath's yacht? Some of whom were killed. What about Ken Clark? Police said they cannot prosecute him. He's above the law. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, no one is above the law. The law applies equally to everyone. I don't care what position you might ter temporarily hold. Remember, there are no important people more important than any others. Some may have temporarily hold what people consider to be important positions. You know, but then I'm more important. Not really. We've all got a part to play. And when we're told that someone like Ken Clark is above the law, one wonders how many other cover-ups there are. And a guy who gave evidence regarding Ken Clark. Um, he's now in hiding. He's living in fear. So when you get to the top, the higher up, you know, the higher up you go, the more more scary it is. Because the higher up you go, the more clout they have. And don't forget, These people have got so very, very, very much to lose. Now, I have to say this because it's true. Within, within social services, within all the major institutions, the police, the judiciary, NHS, major charities, um, NSPTC, so on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, and of course, the government. It's, there are some very good people. 
but the institutions as a whole, as, as entities within themselves, are corrupt. They're run by psychopaths, they're run by paedophiles. The whole world is run by psychopaths and paedophiles. It's no way that There's, there's nothing, I, no, no, nothing more I can say that hasn't been said by other people. I urge you to check out the subject on the UK column, um, Bill Maloney, Pie and Mash Films, Cash for Kids, another website. Um, links to all these are on the front page of my website. And just have a look. Have a look what your own council is doing, your own local authority. Yeah. And when it comes to care homes and the caring profession, both adults as well as children, the number one qualification for such work is that you care. And I look in my local rag and I see advertisements for care workers. No experience necessary. Wage, minimum wage, which is, you know, right, you can live on it, we can survive on it, but you haven't got room for holidays or many luxuries. And if you have to run a car to get to and from work here, no chance. And I know some most excellent, excellent care workers. Lovely, lovely people. Great, a lot of admiration for them and the work they do. But I also know some care workers who couldn't give a shit. As far as their concerns, they, they do what they are told. And I asked one of them, yeah, but what, what you're doing here um, isn't beneficial for your client. The response was, I don't care about that. I do what I'm told. And in a lot of instances, how many, I don't know. I know the ones I've seen firsthand. It's not about care, it's about control. The behaviour, timetables are, are controlled to suit the well running of the care home, adults or children. And uh, but my main concern is children. To a great extent, adults, they're not all of them do have a voice, they are aware of what the hell is going on, children do not. Um, and, and what is happening now, there's so many children who are growing up to totally distrust authorities, any adult, um, because they've been abused so many times, you know, shit on. Uh, well, um, no, I, that's it. I, I don't really like talking about this shit, but you've seen that, you've seen that interview, and those are just two despicable low lives. And it really does go right to the top in all the major institutions. And when I say to the top, I mean the top. That includes the royal family. People won't like that bit, perhaps. We're tough. If you don't want a truth, if you 
you don't want the truth, go and read the Sun or the Times of BBC. Yeah. Bury your head in East Enders or Crossroads. Get, just sit and watch the idiot's lantern. Pretend it nothing's nothing's going on. But I'll tell you. When people when there's a section of society who treat children as no more than commodities to be bought and sold and no child is safe. 